to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. You know, Elias is a student of the word, right? Yes, Elias had a very profound saying last night when he, when he caught me. It's, it's a good one, too. He says, Pastor, you got the Septuagint in here somewhere, one of these bookshelves. He found it. He says to me, he says, a, a lot of times, come on up here, son. You can say it better than I can. It's your words. Give him that mic, Sister Ashley. What, what, what was you uh, explaining to me last night? It's a good, y'all listen. Y'all listen real close. This is a good find. Listen to what he's saying. Makes sense, too. Come on, Lies. When you look at a lot of the prophecies that the apostles used that was in the Torah, and they were speaking it, and they were saying that these prophecies of, of Jesus, or the Hamashiach, they are using the Septuagint, because the King James Version and other books like that are written from the Masoretic text. Y'all hear that? Right. Key point. The King James and them was... Translated from the Masoretic checks. Right. He's saying a key statement now. A key statement. You see, because the Septuagint is anywhere between 200 and 700 years before the Masoretic test. Yes. So listen to what he's saying. Don't miss it. Read. I read. <laughs> Go ahead. And, and the Masoretes did not believe that Jesus was the Hamashiach. Did y'all the get that? Word. They did not believe that. They didn't believe it. So... So what they would do is they went back into the Torah and the Tanakh and they would take the prophecies and they would twist them in a way that it could be somebody else. And an example of that is in Hebrews chapter 10, it's talking about sacrifices thou didst not desire, but a body hast thou prepared for me. And it is giving a reference to Psalms 40 verse 6. But when you go to Psalms 40 verse 6, it's not there in your King James Version. All it does say is that sacrifices thou didst not desire. But when you go to the Septuagint, it does say the exact same thing the apostles quoted. And it's many times in prophecies that where the apostles quoted, they quoted straightly from the Greek Septuagint. Which is a more reliable source than these modern day Masoretic texts or this Yiddish language. Henceforth, here go a saying, I do not believe that translators had a lick of inspiration under them or in them at all. But the men who have gotten the word of Yah straight from the king, they were inspired. You see that? Isn't that a good find? It is a good find. Because if you go straight to the King James and go, well, it ain't over here, but if you go back, see, the, the Septuagint is a reliable. It's very, yes, it is too. Oh, 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 and by the way, now you see the reason why I don't jump on this name bandwagon either. I keep telling y'all, if there's any merit to it, I would have discovered it by now. Sure. I mean, look at all the stuff we believe that people think we just a cult of a cult of a cult crazy. <laughs> don't you know if there was any merit to all these different names, I'd have figured it out by now? Yes, sir. Thank you, son. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, That's beautiful, isn't it? Look at him looking. 